Hello and welcome to the first photo challenge in my 12 weeks photo challenge series. I'm standing out here in the middle of a very snowy landscape. It's quite cold, but I came out here because um, this is kind of in tune with today's photo challenge theme, which is going to be childhood and reconnecting with that true joy of discovering and exploring things and letting go of things like self-doubt or self-criticism, which aren't really in a child's vocabulary. On Monday, we talked quite a lot about connecting with what truly inspires you. And that's why I think tapping into our childhood and trying to remember that feeling of just chasing our curiosities and discovering things and exploring and going on adventures in the kitchen and really seeing the small things as something really exciting and paying attention to the details. As children, we were naturally nosy and really curious and would follow the things that sparked our interest. And we didn't think about self-criticism or the outcome. We didn't worry about that too much. So that's the whole point with today's photo challenge to tap into that. A few weeks ago, I went ice skating for the first time in years. And as expected, uh, I looked like a fool. It was more like Bambi on ice, <laughs> but it was still so much fun to do something for the pure joy of it. And even though I looked like an idiot, and yes, I did fall once, um, it was so much fun uh, just to do it and kind of be bad at something and uh, like a little bit out of your comfort zone. And that is what I want you to think of instead to tap into and the satisfaction and joy of making something and improvising and going along and just seeing how it goes without taking too much pressure because that is really the killer of any new creative discoveries. So you just have to go out there and try and just put any self-criticism or negative thoughts aside for this one. For this photo challenge, I've broken it up into five steps. So the first one is choosing an idea and story. The next one is to plan and prepare it. The third one is shooting. Then we're gonna edit the photos. And lastly, the fifth one, share them. I'm going to show you my process on how I interpret this theme. And the point with these photo challenges is not that you should copy or imitate or do them as I do. The idea is more that I'll show you the behind the scenes and step-by-step -step process. So hopefully you'll get some ideas and inspiration then when you go out and take your own photo. The first thing we're gonna do is to choose your idea and story. One good place to come up with an idea for this challenge is to think of an activity that you really enjoyed as a child. So maybe you enjoyed dancing or collecting stones or jumping or running or playing with something specific. So think about those things, maybe make a list and then try to think of which ones could be translated into a photo. So which one of these activities is visually compelling and something that you'd like to capture in a photo. Another way to go about it could be thinking of a childhood memory that was dear to you or something that you uh, just cherished from your childhood and use that as starting point. So there's no right or wrong and you're more than welcome to really go and interpret this your own way. I, as a child, really enjoyed painting and drawing. So I've chosen paint as my activity for my photo. Uh, because that's something that I did a lot as a child and uh, it's something that is really visual and I can play with the colors and I have already also in mind um, something instead of just painting on paper, I'm going to paint on my legs. Also, I'd urge you to not get too caught up in trying to think of an original idea. Take what comes naturally and intuitively. Everything's already been done, so it's really in the execution and in the details and not so much about, oh, is this the most original idea ever? Ah, don't worry about that so much and just go ahead and follow the thing that came to you intuitively and that you feel most excited about. Next up, planning and preparing. So even though a photo might look very spontaneous and spur of the moment, and sure, sometimes they are, but in my case, I often like to plan my photos and prepare beforehand. 
and I just do this because I feel like it takes away some of the stress uh, of the actual moment of taking the photo if I have a plan already. And this is probably individual for everybody, but for me, this just works. First thing I usually do is I sketch out my idea and in the workbook that I put together that is free to download in the clink below. In the clink? <laughs> in the link below. Uh, so Kika's photo challenge workbook, you can go and download that. I've also made some photo planning sheets so you can sketch out your ideas during these weeks. And the sketch doesn't have to be fancy, mine certainly wasn't, <laughs> but it just gives you an idea of the composition that you're going for. Then when you're shooting, obviously this can change and you might have to adapt a little bit, but I just find it helpful to have a plan ahead. Next, I knew I wanted to take this photo indoors and that I needed light. And this time of year, there is so little light and there literally hasn't been sun for weeks, it feels like. Now there's one sunny day, but it's so short. So this is a real struggle. So I tried to take it on a day that I looked at the weather forecast, it wasn't gonna be too dark. And then I decided to position myself close to our balcony where I have the biggest windows and it still got dark, but that's at least the location I chose for this. Then uh, next up, I just gathered all my props that I knew that I was gonna need for this shoot. So I had bought some flour beforehand, I had my paints, I had thought about the dress I was gonna wear, and then just some few bits and pieces that I thought might support my story in my photo. When taking photos, a good way to make sure that the photo is not going to be a disappointment is that you take a photo of something worth photographing, so actually doing something. So I painted my legs and first I just started painting on just a piece of paper to kind of sketch it out and see how it would look. A good thing to remember when you're planning the composition of your photo is to think of what the viewer's eye is going to focus on. So if you have a lot of elements that are all very similar in size, for example, it can be kind of distracting and your gaze is not going to naturally gravitate to some point of the frame. And that's why I made some of the flowers also bigger. I realized I need to have like a focus point in my frame. So think about that when you're planning the composition and maybe you have different objects or props that you're putting together. So just to get that balance and this can sometimes take a long time. So be ready to adapt and improvise and go with it and really try to look in your frame and also look at your composition. So for this photo, I wanted to take it from above. So I just put my tripod on the tallest it could be and tilted my camera downwards. So camera angles is really what can make or break a photo and is one of the trickiest things I still think. And depends really on what your idea is. And if you're shooting with your smartphone, I have a video on lots of tips on how you can make uh, kind of no tripod tripod so when you don't have a tripod like still make makeshift tripods with tape and stuff so you can go ahead and look at that and if you have a tripod it just takes some trial and error to get that angle right. Now when I had put up my camera I first thought I would just have the floor as the backdrop but I quickly realized that it looked a little dull and quite two-dimensional so instead I put this linen sheet instead underneath and I think it works better because it gives it more texture and also three-dimensionality because the light reflects on it more. Then it's just to shoot away and I use this app that I connect my phone to my camera with and then I can trigger my camera from my phone. You just need to have built-in Wi-Fi in your camera to be able to do this. Um, otherwise, working with the self-timer or depending on what type of photo you're doing, this doesn't necessarily have to be a self-portrait. Um, you just have to see what works best for you. And I would definitely recommend taking many different versions and just trying to different options until you feel like you got it right. It was getting really dark when I was doing this, so I was feeling quite stressed because the light got very bluish. So then you just have to maybe up the ISO a little bit and fidget with your <laughs> camera settings and just try to make kind of quick decisions and try out things to see what will work best. I edit all my photos, usually in Lightroom or in Photoshop. 
and for this photo I'm not gonna use any Photoshop so I'm just gonna take them directly into Lightroom. Now I've shot my photos both in RAW and in JPEG so in JPEGs it's just easier so when I go through the photos and select the ones I want to use it's easier if I have them in JPEG so just in like a small format and then I copy paste the raw footage or the raw photo onto my external hard drive. The first thing I do in Lightroom is I check the exposure and white balance of my photo. Now with these photos because it was really dark and the light was very bluish so I had to increase the exposure a little bit and just get the warmth a little bit more towards the yellow. Next, I usually check my highlights and shadows uh, to see if it got a little washed out, so the details, if they're gone, so then maybe I bring down the highlights a little bit. And then in the shadows, if I can see that the details aren't really visible, I might bring up the shadows a little bit. Because it was so blue and got a little washed out, all the colors, I increased the saturation and vibrance a little bit in my photo. Next up, one of my favorite tools is to go into these curves over here because here you can just make such a massive and dramatic impact on the overall feel and look to the photo. Usually first I will take down the highlights a little bit, so this top point here in the right corner, and then I will also usually create a little bit of an S-curve and take up the black point so the shadows basically are more gray than completely black. This is all a matter of preference and this also will depend a little bit on the photo. For this one, because the light wasn't ideal, I had to do pretty dramatic things um, to keep those details there, but not do it too washed out. But at the same time, I also feel like it kind of works that it's a little melancholic and a little bit desaturated actually in these photos. In Lightroom, you can actually create your own presets as well, and I have done some, but then I still will always almost go and individually edit every photo because I just feel like they are so different and depending also on the conditions when I took the photo. But that's a really great tip, I think, if you want to kind of save time. And then obviously when I had done one photo, so in this series, um, then I could just copy paste those same settings for all my different photos. Usually when it comes to colors, I will use the curves and then I will also think of what are the main colors I really want to make pop in my photo. So I don't want maybe want to make all the colors equally strong in the photo. So for example, the greens I took down a little bit and experimented with the oranges and the reds and just saw which ones I really want to make the highlight and kind of the main character in the photo. I will also usually put a little grain in there because I just think it gives it a really nice texture and feel. So you can go and do that. And also you can put a little bit vignette if you want. When you're happy with the photo, go ahead and export it. I usually always also crop my photos in four x five because I am going to share it on Instagram. And that is the best aspect ratio because it will take the most space on the screen when people are scrolling. One little thing I wanted you to pay attention to here is that, as you can see from the behind the scenes, the space I was working with wasn't that aesthetic or pretty and the light was also not really great. But then by constructing it and gathering all these props and styling it, I could make something that I was really inspired by and thought looked really nice. So don't let the feeling that, oh, I don't have a beautiful backdrop or my house isn't pretty, don't let that hold you back. You can construct that and imagine it and instead gather things that are beautifully, uh, beautifully aesthetic. That is not a good choice of words. Uh, that is aesthetic to you <laughs> and that you find that would look nice in a photo and can be really small things. Again, like all kinds of organic things like leaves and flowers work really well for that. Um, yeah, so I just wanted to say this because so often I see people saying like, oh, but I don't have a pretty house, but don't let that hold you back. You can create that and imagine it. And with very small things, you'll be surprised how big a difference it can make. And next up is sharing it. For this photo, because it was inspired by childhood, I think a really good idea is to share a little bit about the photo and what made you snap this photo and the idea. And I would love to also read your stories and hear how it was for you. So if you do share it online, then 
remember to use the hashtag Kika's photo challenge. And if you do, then go and click on the hashtag and go and comment on someone else's work uh, and maybe give a like. And I just think it would be so nice if this could be a really supportive community and where we would go and see each other's work. And, you know, it's when you put in a lot of effort and time and maybe it can feel a little scary to share it, it means so much when somebody acknowledges it or gives a comment. So let's do that and bring a little bit of positivity into each other's day. Thank you so much for taking part in this first photo challenge. I hope you enjoyed it. I can't wait to see what you will cook up. Uh, I'll see you here again back on Monday with a new Monday month. No, Mindset Monday video. <laughs> And next week on Thursday, again, there's going to be a new photo challenge. And remember, if you're watching this later, you can complete this at any time and go ahead and download the free workbook that I've created with all the goodies in the link in the description below. Thank you so much for watching and doing this with me. And I will see you again soon. Bye. Hello. There's a bee in my bonnet. Hello, hello. A bee in my bonnet. Hello.